Alright, so what I want to explain to you guys and gals is if I could remember what we were talking about. It was about time photon. I started to draw the photon with its orbit and stuff around it. That's kind of the idea I was getting. Hmm. Oh, spinorial matter, right? Okay, I know that's what I was talking about. The spinorial matter. I remember now. Okay, so check this shit out. Y'all are gonna like this. I know where I know what I was talking about now. Spinorial matter. Okay, so spinorial matter is a new type of matter in physics that um you have regular like 3D matter, okay? Which takes 360 degrees to do to achieve a full what's called orientation rotation, okay? And that is a sphere uh, rotating around itself, okay? Achieving a 360 degree spin. That's why the circumference of a sphere is measured in that. All right, uh, because there are 360 degrees within this circle. All right, a triangle, that's why we know a right, uh, uh, that is 180 degrees. Uh, if I'm not, well, an equilateral, hold on, which one is it? There's one, it, it's supposed to be 180 degrees if I'm not mistaken. Like, what is it, 65, 65, and 60, 60, and 60, or some shit like that. I can't remember the exact, it's been a while since I've done geometry, sorry. Um, I know that sounds a little fishy. But this spinorial matter says that this matter that once took, you know, two whole, uh, I'm sorry, this, this matter that once took one rotation, there is a new matter that it's the same particle, but it has to do two complete spins around itself. It has to do a 720 degree rotation. So that, that, that to me reminds me of us as beings we spin ourselves into something and then we get ourselves out of it or we have a negative situation and then we get ourselves out of it as we travel on our path of life you know what i mean so we are the beings of spinorial matter that's us and as we travel throughout space time we bring on through our gravity, through our fields, we bring in, see this pressure, that's this externalized world that's coming in around us every day. All right, that's why they say that diamonds are created from pressure because we are the diamonds in the rough. So that's why through meditation, when you learn to meditate, you kind of learn to sit with yourself. All right, and you learn to just be in the moment. Okay. And you learn to just be. And from this, you are taking this pressure here and you are converting it into the grounding energy that is supposed to be. All right, you're converting all that pressure. That's what meditation does for us. That's what things like box breathing does, okay? You are throwing it into the ground. You are having it go straight through you into the ground, straight into your crown, all right? And it is converting it into grounded organized order and then the next step is you the being i'm fucking this all up but that's okay pardon my little drawings i'm just trying to be quick okay you the being are then in motion you know and that's us this is us and then we take all this internalized pressure. Fuck. We take the pressure, turn it into order, which then turns it into power and self. All right, that's why we practice this stuff, y'all. Exactly, I, f I feel the same way. Uh, Freya, I feel the same way. Where are where am I at with Edgar Casey? I love Edgar Casey. My interest in physics makes me a highly spiritual being. Thank you. 
Box breathing is the best. I had something playing when we did that. Yes, I did. I did. I had a uh, 639 hertz frequency playing, as a matter of fact. And then I put on 432 hertz. To finish the streams tonight, we can actually put on that. I was drawing something about a particle. Y'all are so awesome. Thank you so much. What benefits do I gain from having really long hair? It is your power. It is your power. Your hair is an externalized form of the internal nerves that you have. So it develops extra sensory perception. Like all Native Americans knew this too. That's why uh, back when the army used to recruit scouts that were Native Americans and they shaved their head, all the ones with shaved heads would get fucking killed because they lost their extrasensory perception skills, their hunter skills, their, their intuition. They lost it all when you cut your fucking hair off. And that's why I'm growing mine back out. My bangs are actually like down to here now. It's awesome. <clears throat> so, um, and what's cool though is when you convert the pressure into the order and then turn that order into the power, and which is power does not mean your power over people. Power means your sense of self. Oh, that's cool. Wisco guy says, dude, you are my spirit animal. That's a first. Thank you. That's fucking dope. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're awesome. I love you, Wicko guy. Wisco guy. You're awesome, man. Um, so this power through the sense of self, because the tricky thing about desire is the moment you want power, you can't have any of it. But the moment that you release it is the moment that you have it all. You have to release that power that the order from the pressure gives you. You are a battery. If you don't release that power, you're going to explode like an overcharged battery. And thus you will die. It's not good. Why do you think people have like... Why do you think people eventually blow head gaskets and shit? Everybody does. They have to. They have to. It's the, it's the gas can in, in the sun metaphor okay so that's why we practice things like this because throughout our life okay from birth to death you have to practice this stuff because the tibetan book of the dead talks about how meditation literally is a practice for the dead for dying and you don't want to be one of those people that are on your fucking deathbed going cursing your body going oh i wish i would have done more because that's like the worst possible thing that you could be all right, that's like the worst possible place that you could be. Collective center, yes, absolutely. That's what the oneness of of the Tao teaches, is that uh, if, if you were on my um, stream right now, you'd see that I'm drawing uh, something. So this is our fetal nature, the fetus gestation, basically. And then this is our life. And our life will have series. Our life is guaranteed to give us a baseline, period, okay? Our life is guaranteed to give us a baseline. And from this baseline... Alright, let me zoom in for you guys. So we're guaranteed to have, the, have this baseline for life. And you know what that is? You're alive... And then you die. That's the baseline. That's it. <clears throat> the two things in life that are guaranteed is that you will be alive and you will die. Anybody else who says anything short of those is selling you something. They're snake oil salesmen and fuck those people. So the only two guarantees that we have in this world is that we are going to be born and we are going to die. Okay? But from this understanding, you understand that this whole process here in the middle doesn't have to be pain. It doesn't have to just be rife with pain then followed by misery oh, shit i did that wrong it doesn't have to be followed but it doesn't have to have that in it you know what i mean it doesn't have to all right it doesn't have to have that stuff in it so You are guaranteed to have these things, though, if you do not practice this sense of oneness, though. It's a guarantee. But these things will literally, as you practice, like the moment of now that you say, I am, I am this, you know, I am the dot, dot, dot. From the moment that you say, I am, these end. Pain and misery and all that end. Because you have made a conscientious decision to enter 
into a new reality. Ultimately leading to the same point, of course, but you have changed the potentiality of your timeline. And if you do this enough times, you can quantumly continue forever, theoretically. Theoretically. Because with every split, it's just like um, advancing yourself. You're evolving. Imagine being a Pokemon with one, two, three, four, five, six evolutions. Imagine how strong you'd be. That's pretty much like human beings. And however many times you go through this karmic cycle of death and rebirth in your life, the phoenix rising from the ashes, that's why a lot of people are just like, man, I feel like I've lived so many lifetimes. Well, you have. In this one lifetime, you did. You know? And it's just, it's crazy to see how people just kind of forget that, you know? The egg. And this is the egg of possibility here. That's kind of what I'm trying to draw here. We're, we're, we're going to put a, put, put a big P in there for possibility. So you are the egg of possibility. Quantum immortality. Yes, Jake. And from quantum immortality, you no longer have any of this bullshit. You don't have the extremely highs and the extreme lows and then you don't have them really close together anymore what happens you don't have that so what happens is you ultimately end up on this linear path of peaks and level ups and then you'll stay at a plateau and then you'll level up again and then you'll fucking notice literally a graph that looks like this and that's the progression of your life this is what you want this is what you want because you are transcending Okay, you can see Rich if you can join the Twitch or the YouTube. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you will achieve quantum immortality because the part of you that exists in this, which is spirit, goes on forever. And what's cool about this is then you would then escape this whole fucking process of karma, what they call karma. You then escape all of this. See, we call this whole fucking thing karma. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's not karma. It's called samsara. S-A-M-S-A-R-A. -S -A -A. There might be an H at the end of that. I'm just going to put an H just to be uh, safe. But the end of this whole process of birth, life, death, all that is called samsara. So we are in this samsara. And samsara is the karmic wheel. Crap, I still have the... Um, samsara is the wheel that spins as karma and dharma take their course. Okay? So, karma and dharma. So, it's like the karma... Is the energy that we put out. And then the dharma... You know, the yin and the yang. Okay, that's what we experience. We are the Dharma and the Karma. This whole wheel, this whole process itself is called Samsara. And that's what takes me to that spinorial matter is it takes 360 degrees. In all reality, it actually takes 720 degrees for the entirety of your karmic wheel of Samsara to resolve itself to get you back to your original orientation, which is this. You see it now? That's why this spinorial matter, you do get back what you put out there. That is so true, Wisco guy. So it, it really takes two whole spins for us to get back to our fundamental nature of reality. Okay. It really does. And it takes a long time. That's why a lot of people are just stuck. They're just stuck. They're just fucking stuck. And they can't ever get unstuck. Why can't one get unstuck? Because once you're stuck, you have to realize that you're stuck. And the moment you realize that you're stuck, you become unstuck. You, be you cannot become unstuck by being stuck. You must outgrow this issue.